It's time for a neutrals review on the Premier League. The intro. A free intro made by myself, a cappella. Anyway, any shocks to report in the Premier League? What, Chelsea top of the league? That's not a shock. Conte has got some of those players moving in the right direction. He's woken them up. You know, they win the Premier League and they think, no, nah, we'll have a season off. We can't be bothered. Mourinho's all right. I can't do nothing. And it was Mourinho who got the sack, lost lost that dressing room. Where Conte, I think, has gone in there, enthusiastic. A few teacups lobbed around, or maybe cappuccinos, I don't know. Well, he's Italian, so it probably was cappuccinos. But it's worked. Chelsea are top of the league. They're not second. We'll start with Man City. Pepe. Well, he's got some bone idle players at that club. Worth millions, on millions. They're not pulling their weight for 90 minutes or game after game, are they? Simple as that. All Pepe has to do is wake some of those players up. And Man City could be a force. Liverpool, well, Klopp made a mistake sending Joe Allen. And he needs to sort the defence out at the back. Because really, a 0 0 at home against Man United is not acceptable. 0 0 against Southampton, it's a good result, a good size Southampton. But it's games like that, you have to win 1 0 if you're going to win the Premier League. <laughs> And like Newcastle did 20 years ago, they outscored teams, but when it all come down to it, they conceded it too many, where United tightened up at the back and won the Premiership and won the double, and then they retained it. Chelsea won the um, FA Cup that season, 97. Arsenal, problem after problem. You know, video is going dark. Oh yes, Grundy on the bench, not good enough to be on the pitch. I even said it, how many times have France looked a better play when he's come off? I've also got the other French guy, the captain, called Chelsea, I can't even say his name right. When he's good, he's good, but when he's poor, he's utterly useless. And Cole Chains, he was at loan at West Ham last year. I thought they were going to send him to West Ham. They brought him back, put him in the team, and he's looking absolutely out, out of his debt. He doesn't belong in that Arsenal team. And as far as Theo Walcott goes, yeah, he's had an amazing start this season, but we know them. And come on, he's starting to fade away. He's falling into the background like he does every season. And uh, who could they sign up? Well, I need a striker. Troy Deeney's out there. Bring him in. I'm not sure who they could bring in defensively or as a holding midfield player. I mean, they're battling against the whole of Europe but all the top teams. But you see, but the, when I was on the um, early in the season on the um, Burkhart Wonderland stream, they were like, nah, Troy Deeney's not good enough. That's because he plays at a lesser side like Watford, and these are to be signed up by one of those top teams when you're playing at one of the smaller clubs. It's getting rarer and rarer. It is. So, could be a player of Arsenal to me, it would be fantastic for Arsenal. Scores, goals, penalties, you know, he's, he's here, there, and everywhere. He assists in. He makes a lot. <laughs> And he does, he does score goals in the box, outside the box. He does, he just does not score penalties. Man United just have to hold on to Mourinho and be patient and not get rid of him. It's going to take Mourinho three to four years to make them Premier League champions. It won't be till next year they're back in the top four. See, progress. I think Mourinho can do it. There's a lot of dead wood at Man United that needs to be removed. And he's the man to do it. Tottenham, 
bit suspect in the centre of the fence and I need someone in midfield. I mean sending Chadley to West Brom was a mistake. Otherwise I think Tottenham look fantastic, but you can tell they look short. If they get that sorted with the team they got, that Premier League title could be coming to the line if it doesn't go to Anfield or over to the bridge. I think Man City can win it too. Arsenal, well if they can sort their team up, maybe they will. As I said, Man United, no chance. Other sides looking good, near the top half. Everton, doing superb under Ronald Koeman. Southampton, another top season. Um, Watford, well, doing the top half, they're not mid-table coming, that's an amazing season for Watford, same as Leicester coming, they blew everybody away by winning the Premier League title, they were never going to do it for a second season, I mean, come on, finishing in the top four, not a chance, Leicester between 12th and 8th, get to the quarterfinals of the Champions League, absolutely superb superb season for Leicester. Leicester are not having a terrible season. They overachieved last year. And this season it's just going to be an average season for Leicester. But I think Leicester can still say they can hold their heads up high and the Tinker Man can say still a good season. Um, Stoke City signed and Joe Allen. Shakira actually looking like a the decent player again, the Swiss international. And you never know. Stoke sneaking to the Europa League. Maybe they're, they're getting their season together eventually. Started pretty poor, but now they're up and running. Of course, they lost to Bournemouth on the weekend, but Bournemouth, they're not there to make up... Well, they are there to make up the numbers. <laughs> Sorry about that. They are there to make up the numbers. Both for relegation candidates... Is where they're going to stay up. Eddie Howe is a great, great manager at Bournemouth. I'm going to tell you now, he is not the next England manager by any means. He was at Burnley and he he didn't have a clue what to do, but he just couldn't do it at Burnley. So for some reason, Bournemouth, it's his home club, it's where he's been all his career. He knows Bournemouth inside out and that's why he gets results at Bournemouth. Tell you now, as for Burnley, Sean Dice. Now he would be in call for the um, England manager. He had a poor result against West Brom, but as he said in his interview, he even got injured when he was a youngster playing for Millwall, and he's never had any good luck at West Brom in jail. So I think that's one result he's going to brush to the side. But Burnley, nil nil at Old Trafford, they they were under the cosh for 90 minutes, but hey, that is an unbelievable result, and they've beaten Everton and Liverpool at home, so actually they're playing all right, they're going to stay up, guarantee it, West Brom, yeah, it's West Brom, nothing spectacular, nothing amazing, some, to be honest, a bit snoozy at times watching West Brom, but hey, Tony Poulis, he works with what he's got, and he's doing it again with West Brom. As for Middlesbrough, they're just the same as West Brom, boring to watch, but hey, they get the results they need, and they, they're they going to stay up. Sunderland, they're in the relegation zone, having another poor season. Hey, Slowly, slowly, David Moyes is getting that team working. Now, he's got a job to do at um, Southern. It's like getting rid of all the utter rubbish, all that dead wood. He has to clear all that out. It ain't going to be done in one season. Now, when he took them over, he didn't have much time to get that team sorted out. Come the transfer window, he can bring a few players in, get rid of some rubbish. And come the summer, next summer, because I think Sutherland will finish 15th. He will have a massive clear egg of them. All the rubbish that Sutherland have accumulated over the seasons. With managers coming in, pinging all these rejects in. I think, is West Brown still at Sutherland? West Brown. 
Um, John O'Shea, I think, is now the tie to international football. And like I said, when we beat Austria 1 0, what a goal from James Clay. For the first time, we look solid at the back. Nobody's getting past that Republic of Ireland defence. One word, no John O'Shea. Uh, for the teams near the bottom now, and I don't think I've missed anybody, have I? Oh, quickly go through my mind. Hull City, well, I've only got 18 players with injury suspensions. Everything's against them. They are doomed. Swansea, well, they can't hit the back of the net. They concede goals in midfield. They look weak. The engine's falling apart at the seams. Bradley came in from America, and he looks hopeless as Swansea City manager. He's not made for the Premier League. And Alan Pardew, who won an award on the true Geordie the third time. I'm not telling you what he won. I'm just not telling you. Check out the true Geordie's channel. You can check it out on there. But Alan Pardew seems to be taking Crystal Palace back to the championship. But you want to keep them in the Premier League? I mean, must, when he first came to Crystal Palace, he was the living legend. They were like, yes, we got the great Alan Pardew back. Yeah, now they want him just to pack his bag and go back to Newcastle, I think. I don't think they, they don't want him. And overall, Crystal Palace, I mean, they've got some good players there. Ben Teke's been okay. Zaha, they got him back. Scott Dan, there's a few good players there. Under Tony Pugis, they were a match for anybody under Alan Pardew. It's like three points. Pretty easy to get them when they can see goals left, right, and centre. And we'll finish off W with West Ham. Look, they're playing at a new stadium. They're trying to make the Olympic Stadium like Upton Park. I mean, Upton Park, you know, as a neutral or as going there as the away support. That was a place, if you love football, and you were a little bit, how to put it going to West Ham, you're a bit nervous and you get easily tensed up and you'll feel a bit like that. Upton Park wasn't for you. That would put the up you, if you know what I mean. That, that would terrify you, Upton Park. But as a real true football fan, do you know what? That place had an atmosphere to it. You know, what do you expect? You're supposed to, when you're not the home, the away fan should be made feel uneasy and unwelcome and an away ground. That's the way football should be, you know. And that's what I've seen with a lot of football today. It's like Disney World now, helping the fans get behind the team. What? The football fans go to the game. We can get behind the team on our own accord. We chant, we sing. We really do get behind the team. These days, you can't do it anymore. A good part of football lost forever. Anyway, that's my review done. And West Ham will be okay. West Ham will get better as this season goes on. Anyway, that's the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll leave there. Talk 100 miles an hour. If you disagree with anything I've said or agreed, leave your comments below. There, just down there. Over this side, it will be thumbs up. If you don't like the video for some reason, give it a thumbs down. It's up to you. But as always, thank you for watching my video. I do appreciate it. <laughs> no, I'm now, it wasn't uh, anything to do with that club there in the south, near Portsmouth. No. Anyway, just the end of the video. And goodbye.